You only need these two lists to study for any exams effectively and get A pluses. This is all I've used during six years of medical school and also as a medical doctor studying for postgrad exam. At the end of the video, I'm going to share with you my exact revision timetable of how I managed to schedule five years worth of material to study for one exam. So make sure you keep watching. First, I want to emphasize that being a good learner who understands all the concepts and how they connect and being good at taking exams are two very different skills. And this video is focused on the second skill, which is being good at taking exams. However, being a good learner does make studying for exams so much easier. This means having a really good encoding system that's embedded in your study routine throughout the year. I'll talk a little bit about encoding later in the video. Whereas being a good exam taker means that you know where and what you should invest most of your time in. That really should be learning high your topics really well. What are high your topics? High your topics are things that come up in exams all the time or are worth a lot of points in exams. You can spot high your topics in a few ways. The first one is that the lecturers have been hinting very hard like they do like a cheeky wink will tell you that hey you should study this pretty well or put a star next to the lecture slides look out for those and another way that you can tell that's pretty high yield is they cover it in different ways so they don't only just cover it in lectures they also bring it up again in labs and tutorials things like that most importantly you see these high yield topics appearing multiple times across lots of different parts of your exam all of those things go into list number one which is also known as the high yield summary sheet i have one for each subject it's nothing really fancy it's usually like an A4 piece of document or even something this small if you can fit everything in. What about the rest of the stuff that you learn throughout the year? Now that's low yield. Sort of niche information like where is the insertion site of the tendon of flexicarpi ulnaris for example. You're not going to need that information unless you're in an anatomy spot test or you end up being an orthopedic surgeon or a plastic surgeon. Don't sweat it. Rather, I will learn in general what are the forearm muscles and what innovates this area, what the brachial plexus is. Just some sort of basic knowledge of this subject if you don't have enough time. In summary, learn the high yield topics really well and cover your basis for low yield topics. Besides having a high yield list, what's more important is the second list, which is the don't know list. To make my high yield summary sheet, I also need to go through all my notes that I've taken throughout the year, past exam papers and question banks. So while I'm doing this, I'm also creating another list of all the things I don't really know very well. I don't have a feeling too well of passively reading my notes and thinking to myself, oh yeah, yeah, I got that. But then when it comes up in exams, I'm like, oh shit, I actually don't know it as much as I thought I did. And that's confirmation bias doing its magic. Now this is the trap of passive learning. So to identify what you don't know, you just gotta be tested. So this don't know list should be full of things that you can't answer in practice exams or question banks, or just topics that you can't can't explain to say your partner or a friend who's not a medicine in simple terms and this is also known as the Feynman method. So this don't know list should help you notice gaps in your knowledge. Ideally this list should only have things that you can't remember small details of, not things that you absolutely have no clue about. If you notice that your don't know list is massive and you're really struggling to answer practice exam questions that require to see the big picture, bring different concepts together to answer the question, then you may really need to look at your learning techniques throughout the year. Justin Song, who is a study coach who probably used to be my senior since he is a New Zealand doctor, covers encoding really well. Basically, what he says is that if you're not encoding information really well at the start into your long-term memory, you're going to lose it pretty quickly. But if it is encoded quite well at the very beginning, you're still going to lose it eventually, but it takes way longer to forget that information. And it is a lot easier to retrieve it when it comes to studying for exams again at the end of the year. I usually do this by laying out my maps to see if I can connect different ideas together, seeing how they look in a big picture setting. And this is also known as the Hibbian theory, where when you connect different ideas together, neurons start to fire together as well. Hey, to learn more about encoding, make sure you check out Justin's video over here. At the end, I combine my donor list and my high yield list into one, and that becomes my cramming sheet for studying last minute. The rest of the stuff that doesn't fit into any of these two lists, don't waste time on them. You do not have have the time or the capacity to study these things. You would have heard it again and again in all my videos about the importance of doing practice exam papers and question banks as a form of active recall which is one of the most effective way of memory retrieval. And this sort of active learning really helps me focus especially when there's tons to get through. 
If you're in med school, make sure you check out Past Medicine. They've got amazing question banks that you can do. I'm in no way sponsored or affiliated, but I do them all the time. I'm still using them to study for my MRCP exam. Here's an extra tip too. I usually save the most recent past exam papers in the last two years closer to exam time under exam conditions. And this is just to get a bit more familiar about how it feels like to sit exams under pressure. Now we've covered what you need to do. Let's talk about when to do what. This is where revision timetable comes in. I believe the key to preparing for exams is scheduling ahead of time, especially if it's a big exam that requires to study lots and lots of different subjects like A-levels or MCAT. I'm going to show you my study timetable for the medical school final exam or otherwise known as the USMLE step 2. For those of you who don't know, this is an exam where they can examine you absolutely anything that you've learned in the past five years in one exam. So I'm going to show you my 2019 Google Calendar. I feel pretty old saying this. All right, as you can see, my exam week is on the 1st of November and these are in red. But my exam study plan started in the first week of September, which means that I have two months to study for the final exam. Having a revision schedule tells you how much time you have exactly to cover all the syllabus leading up to the exam. So then I know how much hours I actually need to put in and how much time I have free for myself outside of medical school. This isn't a timetable to restrict myself but rather by doing this I create time for things like gymming, hanging out with friends, going out for brunch. These things keep me sane and you need those things. Don't forget that. First step to making a revision timetable is to come up with all the subjects that I need to study for the exams. In my case it is by specialties. Each week my plan is to cover two specialties and keeping in mind that I still have to go to hospital attachments, tutorials and things during the daytime. So in the first week of my calendar I'm covering cardiorespiratory in the second week I aim to cover neurology and gastro etc etc. To study for each subject I always make sure that I follow this format of studying so I don't forget anything. First thing I will skim through the notes I've made during the year in my OneNote and then I'll go through the USMLE guidebook for that topic and I do question banks for that subject and complete a couple of exam papers in a week and while I'm doing all of the above I'm generating those two lists the high yield list and the don't know list. This format is the same up until one week before the exam which is study week. You can see that because it's all scheduled I actually have so much room in the evening to not do any study but this timetable isn't going to work unless you can stay consistent throughout the year without printing out. Watch this video next on how I avoid burnout to study effectively all the time.